Hello guys, welcome to the lab report number 5, 23rd of October 2015. Today we're going to take a look at several of the things that I've been working on uh, in the course of the last weeks. Um, the first of it uh, has to do with these dishwasher circulating pumps that you could see in my last video where I was uh, making some suggestions and showing some experiments all around parts that I had salvaged from a meter dishwasher and if you haven't uh, watched that video yet, uh, yet uh, I recommend you to do so. It's, uh, I guess it's worthwhile. Um, at the end of that video I said that I had still issues with water leaking out of um, the edges here and that I would try to make like a seal with some kind of polymer or some kind of adhesive. And what I found to be working quite well is uh, this stuff. It's a so-called MS polymer-based uh, adhesive and uh, I basically put it all around uh, the edges right here to make like a perfect seal and it's working quite well. This is uh, the pump that we saw in, in the last video but I also have uh, salvaged two more pumps or at least uh, the motors uh, from uh, dishwashers that I took apart just a few days ago and I have to say that I found some differences to the Miele machine. Of course the Miele machine is of very high quality and was very expensive while uh, these pumps here are more from cheaper, um, cheaper manufacturers and I have to say that what I have shown you in the video is not applicable to every kind of dishwasher of course because uh, they make dishwashers these days where the, thir where the circulating pump itself, this housing here, uh, is actually part of a huge piece of uh, polymer, a huge cast piece that is basically the entire bottom of the dishwasher itself holding all kinds of components and that of course makes it totally impractical to reuse so you basically don't have any other choice but to simply pull out the induction motor and use it for another purpose. Um, you could use a motor like this for example for a fan because uh, this is actually very similar to the kinds of uh, induction motors uh, with, with motor capacitors that are typically used for that application. Um, the second pump that I have here might even be more interesting for future um, pumping projects than the actual Miele motor because we have only uh, three openings in the pump and um, also smaller diameters right here and right here which um, I guess will make it uh, easier to do, to do the same thing that I did with this pump right here. Okay, um, so much about this. Um, the next project that I want to talk about is this device that you see here on the bench. It is a vacuum tube based audio amplifier that I have been working on um, for about two weeks and uh, what I did is that I took apart some old record players I have been talking about this a while ago in my video series about the vacuum tube tester and uh, I have finally come to making a teardown of these machines. I actually have four of them and I made a teardown of all of them. I have a fifth one and uh, I can show you that right now so that you know what I'm talking about. This is a German-made uh, Grundig TK124 Deluxe. Uh, it's a record player that um, was made somewhere in the first part of the 1970s. It, I don't even know if this particular model is working, to be honest. Um, this is a TK124 and it is already a fully transistorized version of the TK125 Deluxe, which I used uh, to build this amplifier. But it's optically almost identical. You can actually get a machine like this for somewhere between 1 and 10 euros um, on eBay like every week or so and I bought a whole bunch of these machines but all of them vacuum tube based not transistorized 
for just a few bucks or so. And uh, even though some of you might not like, uh, still not like it, that I uh, took apart old machines like this, which some people would consider to be um, uh, would consider to be valuable or interesting for collectors and so on, but uh, factually they're really not, because in Germany millions of these, uh, let's say, uh, cheaper record players were produced by companies like Grundig, Telefunken, and so on and nobody uses them anymore. They are not capable of uh, even of stereo, so these are mono devices. And the, the, the monetary value that it, you have to pay for them simply shows that there is no demand for them. And um, my latest project was revolving about taking the electronics out of it and using it or reusing it to build um, a vacuum tube based amplifier that you can use uh, at home not to say that it is very useful but at least it looks kinda cool and um, is uh, the sort of project that many hobbyists actually want to do so uh, so much about this thing I will put it away again uh, this will later be the topic of um, a standalone episode of course in which I will show you how I made a tear down we will talk about the components involved and um, take a look at the circuits. I actually made um, the circuit diagram here. Um, talk about how I modified it to uh, be useful as a multi-purpose amplifier to be connected to like your PC or uh, a smartphone or whatever. And uh, the, entire, the entire enclosure was made by stock parts, just aluminum angle plates and this aluminum mesh right here. Uh, which I'm using to uh, protect the device but at the same time make it possible to take a look inside see the vacuum tubes and so on because the looks is basically what uh, this project is about. Um, I will not uh, tell you too much because as I said there will be a standalone episode about this but as you can see I actually used these uh, motor transformers uh, which were used to um, drive the tape recorders and so on uh, just as uh, the transformers for the amplifier and uh, yes as a, as a little useless gimmick we still have the rotors inside which are spinning these fans here uh, using power without doing anything useful but I think it looks kinda cool and uh, yeah, I've been testing this extensively over the last days and it's working just fine. Uh, but I still might change some things. But yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it, just that you know that I'm working on it and so on. But there will be another video about this. And uh, yeah, after I had uh, done this project, I of course was thinking about coming, to, coming back to one of my earlier projects which was uh, revolving about the vacuum tube amplifier that I was actually working on um, some time ago and for that I actually sorted through all the vacuum tubes that I had salvaged over the time, uh, over the, time of the last year and uh, was uh, thinking about uh, finishing that project and some of you might have been wondering about that if I'm even working on that and uh, as a matter of fact I'm doing now and what I have done is uh, to basically merge two of my older projects. Maybe some of you remember that about, let's say, 10 months ago or so, I was working on my isolation transformer unit. That's the one in the background, which I'm basically using for every project now. It really appears in most of my videos that I made in the last year. And I have to say that is one of the most useful things to have so if you're still looking for a project that is kind of easy to make but very useful, um, build your own adjustable isolation transformer. And back in the video that I made about it, I was also showing uh, this unit or an earlier uh, version of this unit right here, which was uh, originally intended to be yet another isolation transformer. And I basically merged this with the vacuum tube tester idea. So what I did is to, um, ah, let me show you that, take some of the circuitry of the power supply of the Rode und Schwarz frequency counter 
and insert it into the already existing enclosure, modify the enclosure and right now I'm adding additional circuits. So what this thing will be capable of when it's done is to uh, A act as an isolation transformer for around 880 VA and putting out uh, output voltages of up to 250 volts AC. Then we will have, um, that is of course based on isolation transformer plus this large variac right here, but then we also have the transformer from the vacuum tube based Rodon Schwarz frequency counter which is connected to the small variac here which has actually two movable taps. And uh, so we will have 0 to 250 volts AC at around 4 amperes ma maximum. Then we will have uh, two variable voltages um, between 0 and 300 volts AC but that will also be rectified so rectifiers and filters will be optionally connected to these two variacs so that we can also use them to put out filtered high voltage DC uh, which I will then uh, need uh, or use to uh, experiment with vacuum tubes and um, in addition we will also have uh, like a bunch of linear regulators and buck converters that will generate um, additional voltages because in here I actually have a whole range of transformers so there will be um, a lot of possibilities to generate like floating voltages of all kinds that will be stabilized and so on. So uh, this will not actually be a vacuum tube tester but it will be a power supply that can also be used for vacuum tube experiments and the testing itself I will then simply do that either by um, inserting a bunch of uh, self-made instruments in here or simply uh, I will simply use like um, a combination of my digital multimeter, this power supply and maybe some kind of platform holding like the tube sockets and so on. But we will see about that um, in the future. It's um, just everything step by step here. I see what even fits inside, what can be done and so on. Uh, right now I have, uh, I'm um, building up this board right here which basically has um, Right now, nothing but just um, a linear regulator and uh, the inrush current limiting circuit, very similar to the one used in the other isolation transformer. But I will put at least two buck converters on here that are uh, powered by a um, medium-sized transformer that is down here. So these are basically the electronic projects that I have been working on uh, in the last weeks. But actually there was a whole lot more. I was uh, forced basically to repair my car, to do a whole range of repairs actually. I had to repair my lawnmower and I also made some furniture uh, for the living room. And uh, those are other things that I might also talk about. I just have to find the time to do the editing and so on. I have really tons and tons of video material. But you know, making the editing is always a large portion of my work actually because I have to be very concentrated when I'm doing that and so on. And yeah, I, I'm quite positive that uh, there will be um, uh, a thought through polished video somewhere in the next week, um, but not on this weekend because I'm actually, yeah, I have to work tomorrow on a Saturday, which is of course not so great. And then on Sunday uh, is my birthday, so uh, I won't find the time there as well, so I guess somewhere in the next week. So yeah, these are the projects uh, that I've been working on at the time and uh, yeah, just uh, tell me what you're thinking about it, if you're having some ideas, uh, just let me know it. <laughs>